Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So my name is Romary and this is my first ever video on YouTube. Super excited to be taking on this journey and seeing where it goes because I'm a recent grad from the University of San Francisco and I'm stuck in quarantine so like a lot of other people I'm going to be starting a YouTube channel. I've always wanted to start a YouTube. I think it would be so fun. I've always loved to edit videos, film videos, uh, make montages whenever I go anywhere. I just think it's so fun. I really want to take this channel in more of a like lifestyle type of direction just because I feel like I have some pretty cool things to share about my life and I live in a pretty cool city, which is San Diego. I think it'd probably be something that you guys would think is cool to watch and learn about. So for my first video, I was really indecisive of what to make it, but I decided since we're in quarantine and I know a lot of people have lost their jobs and it's just tough out there on the job market. I thought, what better way than to make a video that helps you guys find your dream job or internship. <laughs> so I currently work in human resources and recruiting for this tech startup in San Francisco. And I've been doing that for a little bit over a year and absolutely love it. think it's super fun. Love talking to random people on the phone all day about their experiences. It's really funny sometimes. You get the craziest people. And I know it's super hard to find a job right now, so I thought, what better way than to help people find a job <laughs> because everyone is kind of on the same boat. So I wrote down five tips, as you can see I've outlined it, being a good YouTuber, that I think will get you your dream job or internship. So let's get on to the video. <laughs> so for step number one, always review your resume before applying to any place. Like if you're going to go on an, a little applying spree on LinkedIn with that easy apply, always make sure to review your resume before you go on that little applying spree because trust me i've done it i've messed up my resume and hadn't realized until it was like the 20th place i had applied to and i was like oh i'm screwed they're not gonna hire me always make sure that you review your resume before applying anywhere also with your resume make sure that it follows some sort of theme or style because as a recruiter i hate reading cluttered resumes that literally have a 0.5 font size and are super cluttered and it's just it's so hard on the eye to see that i just find myself reading these resumes and being like oh my god this makes no sense it's hard to read it's just a lot and that that will just put your recruiter in a bad mood like they'll just be like seriously like you couldn't have fixed it up a little bit <laughs> So yeah, just make sure it follows some sort of style or theme because if you do that, then it'll make it look so clean, collected, detail-oriented, all that good stuff that, you know, recruiters will want to see. I can insert a little sample of mine right here and then you guys can pause the video, take a look at it, and just kind of see that structure that I follow. So at the top, always contact information, your name, you know, your phone number, address, all that good stuff. And then follow it up with your education. So whether that's your bachelor's, master's, both, whatever you got, you can put your GPA, your major, whatever. And after that, I usually put work experience. So I'll go ahead and put my most recent work experience and always try to make that description of the job, both a combination of what you did and what you accomplished in your internship or job. That way recruiters can see that you've done stuff but you've also accomplished other stuff and that's pretty big because a lot of people don't do that. And then after that, I would follow it up with the volunteer section. So only if it's applicable. If for example, you're applying to like a marketing job or something and you maybe babysat a dog. <laughs> I mean, unless if you can find some sort of way to connect the two, I would just say, leave it out. It's not gonna add anything to your resume. If anything, it's gonna harm it. If I see that, I'd be like, oh, I mean, they, they're probably just sending this resume to everyone and they're not tailoring it to the company that they're applying for. And always tailor it to the company that, you, that you're applying for. Add in some keywords from the job description of the company you're applying for. It'll make it so much better. They'll be like, this girl really fits the role because obviously you're using the keywords. And then at the very bottom, I always like to include skills or awards that I've won. It doesn't hurt, just kind of show off your accomplishments. And then step number two, always tailor your cover letter to the company. Please. I hate reading generic cover letters. It's really obvious if you just say, I'm super excited for this job at your company. I hope you can take a look at my resume and then get back to me as soon as you can. Thanks. That is the most generic thing. I read that and I'm like, this dude is sending this cover letter out to everyone and their mom. Like, come on. Also insert a little picture of my cover letter that I like to use right here. I try to make it a page. 
always three paragraphs. So my first paragraph is usually, uh, I'm excited to have applied to this company. I see that you have a job opening, whatever, super excited to work for that company. And then a little background about yourself that they can't see from your resume. So stuff that I would include in this little background check would be, for example, I'm a first generation college student, so I would put that in there because they can't gauge that from my resume. So obviously put things that they can't directly see from your resume like that. And then second paragraph, I usually split it up into three categories. So one being academic coursework, second being leadership involvement, and three being professional experience. So I like to highlight really briefly why I chose a certain experience and connecting it to the job description roles, duties that you would have to do at your new job. This really shows that you have transferable skills from other experiences that you can pass on to this job. And recruiters love that. It makes our job a lot easier. And then lastly, just again, reiterate how excited you are to be even considered for this opportunity. Hype up the company, say like, oh, it'd be a privilege to work at a company that has these types of values. I would love to work with people like this. Gas up the company. Always sign off really politely, whether it be a sincerely best regards, best, comma, your name. Tip for your cover letter, always keep a thesaurus handy. That way you sound smart. Trying to keep reiterating that you're excited to work for a company might get a little old when you use the same two words. So always have a thesaurus handy. You'll sound really smart and like you know a bunch of different vocab words when maybe you don't, but hey, fake it till you make it. Tip number three, Always do your research. When the recruiter reaches out to you and is like, hey, I want to interview you, let's set up a time, do your research beforehand. Read articles about the company, read articles about the CEO, see what they've been on, if they've been on any articles, videos, podcasts, conferences, anything. Throw that in there during your interview. Watch videos that they've made. Go on their YouTube, watch their videos. Talk about it during the interview. Research your recruiter. See what kind of background they have. See if you guys have anything in common. If they're from San Diego and you are too, common ground. Think about it this way. These people are human. If you can form a connection with them and just bond with them on top of giving them your experience and all of that, they're just going to like you more because they're humans. They're not robots. And use LinkedIn. Don't be afraid to connect with them beforehand. Don't be afraid to send them a message. I get so many messages on LinkedIn from people I'm going to interview. They're being so nice. They're like, hey, super excited. Let's connect. Would love to keep you my professional network. I think that's super cool. I mean, they're being proactive. They're go-getters. And I think that's super awesome. Do that. It's not a bad thing. It's not pushy. It's not weird. It's normal. Recruiters are used to it. I'm used to it. A good way to make sure that you've done enough research is to make sure that you're able to pitch the company to someone, anyone. Make sure you're able to pitch it in a really short, cohesive way that makes sense and gets all your points across. Then step four. <laughs> this is probably the most important one. Please, please, please prepare before the interview. I don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste mine. So prepare. If you're not interested in interviewing for this company, you realize, hey, it's not for me, just tell them, hey, change my mind, don't wanna do this, thanks. Simple. But if someone goes into an interview super unprepared about what we do, that's automatically like, mm, not a good sign. I don't know anything about the company, it's just not, not a good thing because there's other candidates who are gonna know way more about the company and show interest. A thing I like to do is I like to have someone ask me questions whether it's on a frequently asked questions page or on their glass door. Some people put in interview questions on the company's glass door that they've gotten asked. So you can take all these questions, have someone ask you, and then just rehearse them. Talk about it as if you were in an interview, like actually prepare. That has helped me so many times. I also like to have handy a little recruiter cheat sheet, which basically has some common questions and answers. I don't read off this thing word for word. I more so have it for guidance because, you know, obviously it's an interview. I get nervous. <laughs> I want to for sure have some notes about what I would say for certain questions, like common ones that people usually get asked before going into an interview. I just like to have the comfort of having some guidance during an interview because you have something to go off of. Obviously don't read it word for word because that's not a good look either, but just have a reference. Refer back to it a little bit. I'll insert like a little video of it so you guys can see. Step five. I thought more people were taught this step but a lot of people aren't and I'm really surprised now that I'm on the other side of the interview but please always send your recruiter a thank you note no matter what it will just make you stand out so much more you guys would be surprised how many people don't send thank yous I literally thought it was something that everyone was taught it made no difference but trust me it makes a difference because not everyone does it and if you do it that shows 
that you're interested in the company and that you really do want to work for us. I always like to keep it really brief and just say thank you for your time. I really enjoy getting to learn about the company, blah, blah, blah. Somewhere in there, throw how it would benefit both you and the company if they hired you. And then again, just reiterate how excited you are, blah, blah, blah. Pull out your thesaurus, use a bunch of different words to say how excited you are. And then again, sign off super politely. And recruiters love that because trust me, I love getting thank you notes. It's so sweet and super rewarding to know that people have had a nice conversation with you and they've loved getting to form a connection and talk about their experience. I think that's super rewarding and I love the aspect of the job. Just some final notes. So if it's meant to be, it will be, trust me. I always like to keep that idea in mind that when one door closes, another door is gonna open and maybe that company just wasn't a fit for me for some sort of reason. No matter what the company, no matter their reputation, no matter their brand, whatever, no matter how good they are, if you don't feel like you're a culture fit at that company and you feel like these people are really different from you, you run the risk of possibly being miserable for the next however many years you're there. You always want to make sure that you're a culture fit with the company and that's super important because that will make you so happy if you work with people that are just like you. The brand of the company, the reputation of the company isn't everything. No matter how good the company is, they could have a really bad culture that you're just gonna be miserable in and you're just gonna feel like another robot in the system and that's not rewarding. You wanna make sure this company values you as a person and that you get along with everyone because obviously you're gonna be spending a lot of time at this place. 40 hours a week, that's a long time to be at a place because working at a terrible job is just awful, it's draining. I hope these tips help you guys when you try to find that dream job or internship. Having someone telling me these tips were the most helpful thing and now I'm working at literally one of my dream jobs. A tech company in Silicon Valley, hello. It was because I followed these tips. I just want to share my knowledge with you guys. I just really want to make sure that you guys land that dream job or internship because I know you can. You got it. It's all in here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment on the video. I'll try to be uploading regularly. I'm new to this so don't be too hard on me. I'm trying. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.